In the second video on multiple linear regression, I'll continue with the example of predicting the prices of used Toyota Corollas. I will demonstrate how to create multiple linear regression models in BizMiner. I'll demonstrate the process of determining which variables to exclude and keep. And as we go through this process, I'll examine model quality metrics that help evaluate the results. Now, when I mouse over this, you can see that I've got my 1,000 rows for our training, my 436 rows for validation. I've got all 22 columns. And so now it's time to go do our initial regression. So, and we'll do our linear regression, which is, is in this case, the multiple linear regression. And it says, well, what are we trying to predict? We're trying to predict price. And it very quickly calculates that regression and gives me some basic information. Right now, you can see that we have a high R squared in our training, but notice that our validation set is really lousy R squared. We'll go look at this in our regression summary. In our regression summary, we have a low mean average error, but if you look down here into our, our validation set, it goes up quite a bit. So here, we're doing well, but that's because of overfitting, and down here, we're not doing as well you can see that our root mean squared error skyrocketed. You can also see that our R squared went down a lot here in our validation set. So there's a lot of overfitting that is happening. And if we look down to see, uh, which of these coefficients are statistically significant, a lot of them are. But we have some that aren't. Power steering doesn't seem to make a significant difference. Mist lamps are not. Metallic paint is not. The number of gears is not. This is interesting. It says that one, this type of fuel type is, but this type of fuel type isn't. So there's some things that we need to get rid of. And we're going to keep this so that we can go back and compare how we do when we eliminate some of the variables that are not statistically significant. So now I'm going to go into this data set, and I'm going to further create a derived data set, and I'm going to select this. You can see it still remains partitioned, and we're going to get rid of some of these. We'll select all and then turn some things off that didn't really help us. And we found out that whether or not you had an automatic didn't really help us. Metallic paint didn't help us. Mist lamps didn't help us. Power steering didn't help us. I'll put possible keepers. and create our subset. So now we still have our 1,000 rows of training, 436 validation, but now we're down to 18 columns. So that will be 17 predictors plus the outcome variable. And let's see how we do now by running a regression on that. So again, we'll select the price as our outcome variable. It calculates very quickly. and it looks like things did improve somewhat. We go up here to our regression summary and let's see how things are. Looks like I forgot to take gears out and see if there are any others that I missed here. Gears and natural gas, uh, those are the only ones that are not statistically significant. If we come up here, we're still not doing terrific up here in uh, our root mean squared error, it still tends to be very high. So let's go get rid of gears, and we'll also get rid of fuel type. So we'll select all, and then we'll eliminate fuel type, and we'll eliminate gears, and and then we'll run a regression on that. Now things improved a lot. Notice here that our R squared uh, improved, and, and we also, the amount of overfitting improved so that we don't have nearly as much overfitting. And our mean average error went down, and our RMSC went down as well. If we go down and look at this, we can see that uh, looks like doors now is sticking out as not helpful. Things are improving. We're getting rid of some of this 
really bad overfitting and some of our our noise, some of our extra air has been falling uh, and now we'll just go ahead and eliminate doors and try this one more time and see how things go. So we'll select everything but doors which wasn't significant. Just give it a name. We'll run a regression on that. And we'll go look at our regression summary. All right, so now all of our variables are statistically significant, all of our remaining variables, and there are fewer. I can mouse over this. We're, we ended up being down to uh, 15 columns, 14 predictors, and one outcome variable. And now that we have this, let's compare this with, let's compare our outcome variables to where we started. So this is when we had, uh, we after we had eliminated down to about 20, two variables and so some of these are still not statistically significant such as gears and, and so forth but let's, what I want to focus on now is I want to focus on uh, the changes here. You'll notice that our R squared uh, was especially high right here but then it fell apart when we went down to our validation set and, uh, and then we had these very high root mean squared error and somewhat high mean average error. When we go over here to when we eliminated all the variables that were not significant, our R squared went way up. And so, uh, again, not very much overfitting here. And our root mean squared error collapsed uh, a lot. It got a lot better. And our mean average error reduced considerably as well. And so things improved. Uh, in, in every single aspect in terms of our regression summary. Less R squared, much smaller RMSC, and a somewhat smaller mean average error. And all of these are statistically significant, and so uh, it's very unlikely that these correlations are, are happening here just by chance.